1977's A Bridge Too Far is a huge star-studded war epic film version of Cornelius Ryan's book of the same name about the disastrous Allied push into the Netherlands showing how in September of 1944 Field Marshal Montgomery's ill-fated Operation Market Garden was given the green light and aimed to drop thousands of paratroops in the hope of securing a string of bridges on the road between Belgium and Holland. Once secured, the Allies will roll a massive tank column into this apparently lightly defended German territory and Holland will be liberated and the road to Germany will be open. Simple as that. However, the ambitious plan comes across some pretty significant drawbacks. Turns out that area of Holland isn't as weakly defended as previously thought. Um, engineers struggle to rebuild temporary bridges to replace those blown to bits by the Germans. And the paratroops dropped into the final target town of Arnhem are quickly cut off. Um, fighting not only to secure bridges but to just stay alive. This all turns what was supposed to be a three-day operation into um, a nine-day hellhole. Let's check it out. So A Bridge Too Far is not only one of those all-star cast affairs but it's possibly a contender for having the greatest cast in a film ever. Uh, so brace yourself for this, we've got Anthony Hopkins, Sean Connery, Michael Caine, James Caan, Elliot Gould, Robert Redford, Maximilian Schnell, uh, Denholm Elliott, Ryan O'Neill, Laurence Olivier and Liv Ullman. And A Bridge Too Far juggles this enormous cast carrying out separate missions many miles apart and to be fair it does a great job of preventing any one of them from getting too lost in the shuffle or becoming indistinguishable from one another. And although the film does that admirable job of uh, rotating through all the storylines and across the various theatres of war, that's not to say each uh, thread is 100% worthy of our time. For me personally, I found that at least two of them were a little bit filler. Um, certainly the James Caan storyline of getting his wounded buddy treated seemed a little bit superfluous to the overall story and I just felt I wanted to get back to the other characters whenever it was on. Also, the fact that it has a jaw-dropping cast of big-name actors doesn't guarantee that every performance is merit-worthy. Uh, Ryan O'Neill as Brigadier General Gavin is terrible in this. <laughs> His bad soap opera acting should never have really been allowed. I'll be gone a little changes. I'll answer you a typical British understatement, gigantic. For example, they can't get us all in at once. Too many men, too much equipment, not enough planes. It's going to take three days to get the men into the Arnhem. Poles and the British. But, um, oh my days, Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman, who I love and is a favourite actor of mine, here attempts a Polish accent so clunky that it's an absolute embarrassment. I am thrilled that your great uh, Field Marshal Montgomery has devised such a plan. I promise you, I'll be properly ecstatic if it works. When it works? Of course. When and I can't not mention uh, Hardy Kruger as Major General Ludwig, or the previously mentioned uh, Maximilian Schell as Lieutenant General Bittrich. Both give excellent performances as uh, German officers. Guys, I'm Stephen at Real Classic Film Reviews. If you enjoy great classic films like this one, uh, click that like button below. Um, it really helps the channel out. And if you are a fan of great films in general, um, subscribe to the channel and click that little notification bell to stay up to date with each new classic film review. Now, A Bridge Too Far is uh, far too sprawling and epic for me to go into detailed plot specifics. Um, its three hour runtime is a bit of an undertaking. And this is mostly down to it wanting to discuss tactics at length, which isn't necessarily a bad thing as it does us, the audience, uh, a bit of a favour and lets us come close to understanding the objectives and the geography of the whole campaign. So there isn't really a, a traditional dramatic plot but it still features suspense and drama and a, a slew of outstanding action sequences. So an early sight of hundreds and hundreds of paratroopers filling the sky is one of those astonishing pre-CGI moments and the use of point of view shots adds another great sense of first person immersion. Unfortunately, it's in this scene that Major General Urquhart, played by Sean Connery, and his men are forced to land about eight miles from their bridge. So other fiascos include promised jeeps failing to arrive, uh, dodgy radios, and as the situation deteriorates further, uh, men are asked to take more and more outrageous risks. Uh, Major Julian Cook, played by Robert Redford, and his 82nd Airborne uh, perform a doomed broad daylight midday crossing of the Rhine in flimsy canvas boats. Um, it goes about as well as you'd expect once German forces show up on the opposite shore. Hail Mary! And Lieutenant Colonel Frost, uh, played by Anthony Hopkins, and his men, bless them, actually made it all the way to Arnhem. Um, here they managed to secure a few houses uh, on one end of their bridge, only to suffer huge losses when they're outnumbered and besieged by approaching Germans. 
Watching the gradual destruction of uh, the nice multi-story house they occupied shows how innocent civilians' lives were just brushed aside in the name of tactical superiority. And it's not all bombast, though. Uh, some of my favourite moments come in the scenes featuring uh, Liv Ullman and the great Laurence Olivier uh, as they treat the wounded in her stately home. Seeing this grand old house descend into some kind of blood-soaked hellhole shows the true cost of uh, fighting over bridges and scraps of land. There's also a creepy scene early in the film when paratroopers come upon some newly liberated inmates of a mental hospital uh, wandering through the forest like a gang of smiling zombies. Do you think they know something we don't? So Bridge Too Far was directed by the, uh, the late great Sir Richard Attenborough who had previously made the anti-war film Oh What a Lovely War and again here doesn't shy away from highlighting Mark Garden's many flaws uh, the most obviously frustrating of which was an unwillingness to question Montgomery's ill-conceived and pretty rash plan uh, despite the strong intelligence regarding German strength in the area and Dirk Bogard brilliantly plays Lieutenant General Frederick Browning who was uh, Montgomery's chief officer for the operation he really doesn't really want to upset his superior's plans and his very British um, the party's on stiff upper lip attitude pretty much dooms the operation and you seriously consider asking us to cancel the biggest operation mounted since D-Day? No, sir. Sixteen consecutive drops have been cancelled in the last few months for one reason or another. But this time the party's on. Under Attenborough's direction, uh, A Bridge Too Far is not only a visually stunning film, but also about as historically accurate as possible. Uh, you can tell a huge amount of attention was paid to the uniforms, uh, the weapons, the vehicles, and also a lot of the actors actually bear pretty good resemblance to their real life counterparts. So as is the case with uh, a lot of films based on actual events, uh, history is its own spoiler. So as we know, things are certain to go all kinds of wrong uh, well before they actually do. The interest comes in the how. Um, it's great to get a glimpse into how things veered so far off course uh, to see how human decisions behind the scenes uh, can create huge loss for both sides. So I'm not sure if this was one of the last films of its kind really. Um, certainly before films like Saving Private Ryan arrived it was, um, which itself is more focused on the, the men involved rather than the overall overlord operation. Now for the sake of time I haven't been able to go into huge amounts of detail around every character in the bridge too far, uh, but take my word for it um, and see it for yourself. Uh, it features some of the biggest and best choreographed battle scenes ever filmed and also features some of Hollywood's biggest stars of the 70s. Go check it out. But what do you think? Well, as you know, I've always thought that we tried to go a bridge too far. <laughs>